Well, we are talking about chips today with shares of Taiwan Semiconductor jumping and boosting other chip stocks as its fourth quarter results suggest that the worst may be over for the sector. TSMC forecasting solid growth for 2024, seeing a revenue increase in the low mid 20 percent range driven by huge AI demand. We have our very own Dan Halley joining us on those results. Dan, you know, we've been talking so much about the slump that we have seen in chips from slow PC sales, slow smartphone sales. There's a lot riding on those AI devices. What do we learn from TSMC today? Yeah, it's it's really the the AI kind of boom that we're seeing, uh, and you know the, the the discussion of AI in general seems to be kind of actually getting rolling when it comes to the the likes of laptops, desktops, smartphones, uh, and don't don't forget the the, the server side of things. So uh, obviously, uh, Akiko, you were at CES, you saw the the uh, huge amount of devices and 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 companies talking about AI, how it's going to be infused into every kind of product that's available. Some of that is going to be vaporware, but uh, when it comes to things like uh, chips, laptops, desktops, uh, those those companies are moving full steam, and they're going to need uh, some manufacturers uh, to to provide those chips. So TSMC, obviously, uh, working with uh, the likes of AMD and Nvidia, so that's going to be uh, very helpful for them. In fact, Nvidia uh, for uh, CES had specifically said that they're basically building AI PCs on their own uh, and have been for some time just because of the fact that they run uh, their their graphics processors. And then on the on the flip side of things, uh, on the, the smartphone side, we're seeing more companies start to uh, push AI as a, a smartphone component. Yesterday, we saw Samsung launch its new Galaxy line of smartphones. They have Galaxy AI, uh, which they point to as, as a huge benefit for Samsung. Uh, part of that is powered by Google's AI capability. So, you know, it's it's becoming a real selling point for uh, the companies, whether or not that translates to consumers, we still have to see those, those phones go on sale uh, later at the end of this month. Uh, Google already sells its own smartphones with some of those capabilities, but uh, we'll, we'll see really when it when it hits the mainstream with Samsung. Google doesn't really have that big of a market share. So, yeah, I mean, th this really kind of shows that that the generative AI play is starting to work its way from, you know, the hype, the discussion of what it could do to actual products now hitting the market. So, Dan, what does Taiwan Semi success mean for its customers like Apple and Nvidia? Does does that tend to translate? Yeah, I mean, it, it generally does. Right. This is something where. Uh, especially for NVIDIA at, the, at this point, um, they're putting out new chips, uh, new uh, hardware for consumers and enterprise. Um, they're, you know, the, the, the difference between the enterprise and the consumer is when it comes to enterprise, you know, they're, they go for thousands of dollars, but they, they don't sell in huge amounts like, like the consumer side of things but they're worth a lot more. So obviously it's it's a better play for them, but the consumer side is gonna see some some boost because uh, NVIDIA just put out some, uh, announced some new chips at uh, CES. So that's going to mean uh, more sales for them. Hopefully for, for NVIDIA, that means that they'll start to see the gaming side really pick up again uh, with these chips. They're getting uh, very good reviews so far. And then for Apple, uh, you know, what we're, what we're going to likely see is uh, some form of generative AI capabilities in the next line of iPhones, if not uh, the the uh, one after that. So we're talking iPhone uh, 16. We have the current uh, model is the 15. Uh, we could see some more uh, push into generative AI there. And obviously, uh, that would mean uh, more powerful processors, more powerful chips for the next generation of iPhones, which TSMC uh, takes care of for the most part. So I think for for Apple in general, they're not going to specifically call out generative AI, at least if they stick to their their MO, which is to not call out the, the technology itself, but rather the features that it enables. Regardless, if they do have features that are powered by generative AI, even if they're not mentioning it, it would be a good uh, uh, thing for TSMC because it would mean more powerful chips, Apple putting in a lot more orders, people wanted to get those devices. That's certainly good timing, considering all the devices people bought during COVID and they're probably due for a refresh right about now. Appreciate you as always, our very own Dan Howley.